G'day guys, today I thought I'd talk about my research books for the Crusades. Really, really fascinating period, the end of the 11th century, that is the 10 hundreds, right through, and there's so much development, not only in a military sense, but also through so, um, society, cultural developments, cultural kind of blending, all of those kind of things come through, um, massive changes, in agriculture, massive changes to even diets. Uh, so let's take a little bit of a look. We've got a lot of books to get through. Yeah, we've got the Vanguard series. Um, I love these books. These are um, really, really good and very useful. This is about uh, medieval siege weapons. It covers the first one goes 476 to 1520. Correction. The first book goes 585 through 1385, and the second book is 476 to 1526. There's a whole range of different siege weapons that were used there and it really covers uh, the Byzantine world, the Islamic world uh, and Western Europe. So lots of really interesting information there. European medieval tactics. For those of you who are really interested in how a battle is won by a medieval army, these are really interesting books. It's so often that we see in movies and television series, they just yell something like, kill them all, and a great big melee takes place. That's absolutely not how things were done. Medieval armies were incredibly disciplined. They were very much understanding of how tactics worked and how battles were won. This was all about um, being able to survive massive counterattacks, understanding the nature of warfare. So these books are really, really useful, uh, especially if you're a reenactor or, or a historical sort of enthusiast or whatever you might be. Some fantastic reading right there. Jonathan Riley Smith, What Were the Crusades? This is a fantastic book. Uh, only cost me around about $20. Um, fantastic, fantastic read. I uh, cannot recommend this enough. Um, for those of you who really want to scratch the surface and understand why the Crusades happened and, and I guess what were the motivations behind the Crusades, it's a really good book right there. Osprey, the Crusades. Uh, I'm such a fan of the Osprey books. They give you so much information. There's a lot of really good primary source information that's used there. And that is explained in a way which is really useful for so many people. Um, lots of interesting artifacts are pictured and explained. I really like it. I'm a big fan of having a library to help people who are new to reenactment. It's so useful. So many of us get into reenactment and don't kind of... A lot of people don't really know where to start. It's a big deal. And if I, I really believe if you can hand someone a couple of books to borrow, to read, to understand and digest, it's, it's so much more useful than giving them a hard time. I've actually heard really disappointed with this. Um, there's a couple of reenactment groups that have publicly burned people's kit that they didn't like. I really find that seriously reprehensible. These were big groups too. So if that's true, I, I think there's some people there that need to seriously take a look at themselves. All right, so we have a whole bunch more of these Osprey books. Crusader Castles of the Teutonic Order. Crusader Castles of the Holy Land. And Crusader Castles of the Teutonic Knights. 
So they're all really good books. Um, and I, I think as it goes along with what I was talking about earlier, this is about the uh, military expansion and the changes in military practice once the Western armies reach the East and understanding how to defeat the new tactics that they're experiencing and coming across. Thomas Madden, The Concise History of the Crusades. Really good book. Uh, roughly speaking, $15, I think. Fantastic read. Really good resource to have. This goes into a lot of the personalities for who's involved. I really like it. The Crusades by Helen Nicholson. Another really fantastic book. Um, I like this. I, I find this a lot of really good information. The Northern Crusades by Eric Christensen. Uh, the Northern Crusades and the European Crusades are, are widely forgotten about and don't really receive the, their place in history that they truly deserve. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of really good information in that book. J. Stephen Roberts, Why Does the Heathen Rage? Uh, a really fantastic book uh, and it really pulls apart some some of the uh, issues that were being faced in the um, at that time in the Middle Ages. The Crusades by Geoffrey Hindley. I, I like this book. Uh, again, it's small, it's concise. There's some good illustrations. Um, it, it talks a lot about some of the issues that were being faced by the Crusaders. I really do recommend this. This is a fantastic read. Alrighty, still going. Crusades and Crusader Knights by Charles Phillips. Alright, so this is really good. It's, it's very much about places. It's very much about dates. There's a lot of really fascinating uh, illustrations. And it talks about some of these key events that happened. Why did they happen? How did they happen? Who was involved? And how did things come to to pass the way that they did. Reconquest and Crusade in Medieval Spain by uh, Joseph Callahan. I truly like this book. Um, again, it's one of these Northern Crusades that really didn't get the attention in history that it deserved. Um, fascinating read and I, I think it looks at the the impact the church was having on the wider sort of medieval population. Really good book. The First Crusade by Edward Peefers. I like this book. Um, this is looking at the Christian church and the people within Western Europe. It talks about Christian society and I guess the impacts, the changes, the influences and why people are going on crusade. I like this. Um, this is a good book to have. The First Crusaders by Jonathan Riley Smith. Um, what I think I really like about this book so much is that he talks about um, it talks about the actual knights themselves. Who were they? Why did they go on crusade? What were they hoping to achieve? Why were they influenced the way that they were? And, and what were their kind of? How does that work within their kind of moral and ethical framework? And that's really really interesting. So um, uh, highly recommend that book. Righto guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.